Hello YouTube, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be explaining how to install a single DIN radio onto your 7 to 13 single cab. This is going to be a, you know, a video of what I did and what I didn't do and shortcuts and things like that. The truck I did it on was an LT model, so it didn't have, it didn't have the center console, it had a jump seat. So it had the different dash as well. Not the ones that the Suburbans and Yukons have, but that the work truck ones have, if you know what I'm talking about. This is everything that you're going to need to do that installation. Before we get into the radio and the harness I used, let's make sure we have the tools because you're going to need the tools before you need the equipment. So first, this is like a little $10 Milwaukee thing that I've just had just for like wire for like drill bits and little drill extension, but it has wire strippers on the end of it. And this is only 10 bucks. So if you don't have wire strippers, you'll need wire strippers. These are only $10. You could get it that way. We'll be using this top one right here, the smallest one that they have. It should be for 14 to 16 gauge, if I'm correct. So we use that very top one. And pro tip on this, if you have this already and you've been struggling to use it, at the top right here is where it closes. So it doesn't have the best you know, connection at the very top, even if you squeeze tightly. So it's a little bit harder to strip wires on this very top one. So what I did was when I put it in there, since the top is the point where it doesn't want to connect all the way, but the bottom is, I stripped my wires downwards. Like if you do it downwards to get this bottom half of the circle right above my thumb, you'll have no problem. So you'll need wire strippers. You'll need a Dremel or cutting tool or some pliers or dikes because once you install your radio and all the harnesses and adapters like this, there's not going to be enough space. So you're going to have to cut behind the dash, behind the radio. Nobody's going to see it, so don't worry. And there's, there's not too many important wires back there. So you just need to cut like a little square. That's exactly what I did was a square. I cut a square out to give the harnesses and all the adapters sticking out some extra room to tuck back in that way my radio wasn't bulging out this is just a single din radio and i'm guessing this it would be the same if not more for a double din it wasn't this radio is that super long but with all the harnesses and adapters sticking out it adds up a lot more space you don't want to pinch anything so you're definitely going to need the dremel or a cutting tool or some dikes because you have to cut I tried playing with it, I tried wiggling it, I couldn't get it to fit without cutting. So you're going to need a Dremel or some cutting dikes. Then with your wires, you're going to have to connect this harness to this radio. And you're going to have to either solder or crimp the wires together. I went the cheaper route, I just bought these little Milwaukee crimping pliers. They were like 20 bucks, 30 bucks. So I bought this. And I use this middle part right here with the little, with the little anvil sticking out. Uh, you know, you, you put the wire, you, you cut the wire, you splice the wire, you twist the copper, you put it in this middle, you put the butt connector on it, and then you cramp down on the middle of the butt connector where it's, where the butt connector has the metal. So you crimp down, hold it in place, and then you want to give it a tug as well. You want to give it a nice pull to see if it's actually in place or if it's just going to come out so on one or two i didn't do it properly and the butt connector was able to come out from a small pull so you want to make them all nice and strong or you can solder them but that you know that can get expensive or that can get hard or if you don't know what you're doing you can mess up xyz you know there's nothing wrong with crimping the radio i got was the mex n5300 bt from sony Quick little review on it. It's it's a great radio, but one major thing that's bothering me, which I I should have paid more attention to when I ordered it, but this part right here, I thought this was gonna be like a little bit smaller, nothing too crazy, but this knob is huge, and like obviously you can't see because it it's a picture, but it sticks out so far. It's this big, you know, it's another steering wheel basically. It's sticking out so far, so I'm not the biggest fan of that. If you go to Crutchfield's website, you'll notice there's an Alpine radio. It's very similar in spec, very similar in price, and it looks exactly the same, but it doesn't have the little steering wheel. It has like an indented 
mm, like D-pad on a controller type thing. And that's what I would go with since they're so similar in price and spec. This little knob bothers me that much, but it's already installed. Everything's already crimped together. All the work's done. So we're not going back. This radio does come with a radio. I mean, remote control radio. And it has like a little extra bass button. I found that to be pretty cool. It has Bluetooth, that steering wheel control capability. It's really cool. It all works. My steering wheel controls work. Another thing is you'll need a harness to go with the radio. So this harness right here is from Pack. At first, I was having a lot of trouble with it, but I'll help you out if you watch this video and you're in my situation, you'll be able to understand. This Pack radio module thing I have is rp5 gm31 now when i watched youtube videos originally to try to understand how to install it or get an idea all the gm 31s that i was seeing were completely different i guess it was an older model and nobody's uploaded a youtube video with the newer model in quite some time but as long as it says as long as it says rp5 gm31 the harness might look different from the ones you see on YouTube, but it's the same thing. It all worked out in the end. What happens is this radio harness connects to the truck's harness. You don't have to splice or anything. It just connects to each other. But then the harness itself needs to be crimped or spliced into the, the harness that is provided from the radio from Sony. One thing that I had trouble with that I wasn't understanding was to get the steering wheel controls to work. If you look at this harness, it has three wires that are connected that are all like rubber band together that says steering wheel controls. So in my mind, I was thinking how to use all three wires to get my steering wheel controls to work. So now I'm freaking out because there's a black cable, a purple cable and a brown cable, but the harness that came with the Sony didn't have a purple cable and didn't have a brown cable, but it did have the the 3.5 that it came with. So I'm thinking, why does my steering wheel controls have a 3.5 cable, a purple cable, and a brown cable? And now I'm freaking out. Where the heck am I supposed to plug all this? Well, the 3.5 connects to the back of the radio, and it's going to go into the area that says remote. I guess that stands for, like, remote steering, or, you know, the steering wheel is, like, a remote control, if you think about it. So that's where the 3.5 is going to go. If you have a GM vehicle, you're going to use that 3.5 aux to the back of this to where it says remote. That purple cable and brown cable that are tied to the aux cable, you're going to disregard that because that's for a if you have a Toyota or a Lexus or whatever in the Toyota family. So I was freaking out. I didn't understand it. The instructions online were pretty mid. But in this case, you're not going to use that purple and you're not going to use that brown. So keep that in mind for the steering wheel controls. The other set of cables are your, your front right, front left, back left, back right. Then you have your ground, which is the black cable. You have a red cable, which is something you're going to need. You have a yellow cable, which is another thing you're going to need. And after, after you connect all the speakers, then your power, your ground, your red and your yellow, those four, you're going to have two other cables left over. So in total, this wiring harness... You're going to have four extra cables that you do not need to use. And it's completely normal. It's just in case you have like a backup camera or if you have a Toyota Lexus, like I said, or if you have the rear entertainment, then you'll use those wires and it'll go to the corresponding radio wires. But like I said, I have a, I have a LT WT lower trim, so it doesn't have all those bells and whistles. So that's what I didn't use. So in summary, if you have the LT, or work truck, or the regular, the LT1 dash on your Silverado Sierra, you're going to have four cables left over. You have a purple brown, and then two other ones. Everything else is going to connect to the corresponding color. To get that steering wheel control to work, you're going to use that 3.5. It connected to the back of the radio to where it says remote. Once everything's connected, you're all good to go. And in terms of the harnesses that have the connectors already, it's just like, you know, triangles, squares, and circles. Like, the triangle only goes to the triangle, the square only goes to the square. So you connect all the connections where they're supposed to go, and then color code all the wires, and you're good to go. If this harness doesn't have a color for this, don't use it. It's very simple. Don't overthink it like I did. 
and you're all good to go. Three tools you'll need. These are the two things you'll have. Everything works good and great. One more thing that I almost forgot to mention is this chime. The chime on this thing is pretty ugly. I'm not a fan of it. It definitely doesn't sound OEM. So I turn it down as low as it can go. And that's that. DM me, message me if you have any questions. Cash at me if you found this video helpful. And you're good to go.